Hi, I'm Lawrence, and in this video, I'll be talking about the resource browser. I'll explain what the resource browser is, why it matters, and I'll also explain how it matters in Substance Painter versus Designer. And then I'll explain you three different ways that you can use the resource browser to improve and work in your projects. So the first thing to understand is how the actual files are built up inside Substance Painter. Now, when you look at Substance Painter files, for example, this one here that ends with SPP for Substance Painter project, it's quite big. It's about two gigabytes and you can easily get bigger projects. For example, the contest mesh, uh, when I was just getting started without texturing anything, it was already two gigabytes. If you compare that to a Substance Designer file here, this SPS, which is only 100 kilobytes, that's a huge difference. The reason for that is the way that they save their resources. So what Substance Designer does, is it will externally reference files on disk. So for example, I'm using some of these JPEGs here, I'm using this other SPS file, and it will just reference them externally on disk. Substance Painter, on the other hand, will take every resource that you use, every single step that you take, every little alpha, every material, and it will store it inside the SPP file. The reason for that is that when you share an SPS, you have to be very careful to pack all your resources along, or you have to package it as an SPSCR, which complicates things. Where with Substance Painter, things are just easier. You share one SPP file and all the resources required to change, build and update the mesh and textures are there. So it's just simpler with the added um, downside that the file sizes get pretty big. Now, all these resources that are stored in here, they, they tend to be fairly hidden. People don't actually realize this. And that's where the resource updater comes into play. It shows you all the resources, which ones are used, and you can use it to update and swap out certain resources. So we're going to dive in and I'll show you how to do that. So I've got a file here that shows a classic problem that you can solve with the resource browser. First off, I've got a layer here at the bottom that does normal details. And this is where I've painted in these little details with the hard surfaces brushes here. So this is painted in and I'm adding some extra detail there. Now, the issue that I'm having is that none of this is represented in the mask that I have in this bronze armor smart material. Uh, it's, it's not actually supported in there. So if I find out which one this is, it's mainly the, uh, the dirt one that's got this going on. I can see there's an MG mask editor here and straight away when I click this, I can see a problem. It says MG mask editor outdated. And if you know about these micro details, if you scroll down, normally you'd find the entry there where you can use the micro details, but they're not in here. Uh, this is an old version of the uh, mask editor and you can't actually use the micro details. So, um, I'll alt click to show you the mask. You see that it's not in there and you'd imagine, okay, perhaps I can swap this. So it's the, uh, the mask editor. If I click that and I click on the mask editor, it chooses the new one, but it completely wipes your settings out. So you actually lose all the settings that you have before. So you could rebuild it uh, with the new one, but it's just not a good option. So this is where the uh, resource updater comes in and comes to save you. So I'll open up the resource updater. I'll filter for outdated status. And right here, I can see I've got an old MG mask editor that's being used. And the one on the shelf is much newer. So if I click update, it does a little calculation and it updates it. And the look of the material, it, perhaps it changes a little bit, but most of the time it's meant to be uh, completely compatible. If I then go back into my mask editor, you can see that it's changed to the most recent version. And now I'm gonna be able to use the micro normal and the micro height that's in here. So uh, just to do that really quickly, if I say add anchor point, then jump into the mask editor here, micro normal, I'll choose my normal details pick that from the normal map and let's see go in here to enable it turn on micro normal then you can see now it's being used and I've updated that to work properly okay I've got another example up here that I can use uh, to show you the benefits of using the resource updater so in this mesh here at the forehead of this character we have painted a stamp and if I look at the stamp specifically in this mask you can see it's a black and white stamp and it's been painted into a layer. And if I'd like to swap this out, so say if I go into my alphas and I'd like to use another one of these fingerprints, uh, doesn't matter which one of them, I actually have to repaint this. So I'd have to either paint over it with a black brush to get rid of it completely, like so. And then I would have to grab this brush and let's see, set it up correctly and just stamp that on to put a new one in there. Which if you do it once, I guess it's okay, but uh, sometimes it's just easier to swap it out instantly. 
And there would be another way to do this with a fill layer and then swapping it out, but sometimes you just want to paint. I mean, it's a substance painter after all. So to show you the way to do that, let's, let's bring this back and undo that. First of all, you want to make sure you know the name of the resource exactly. So in this case, it's a fingerprint hand drop. I'll open up the resource browser. And this time we're not going to look for an outdated one. We're going to look for specifically that resource that we were using. And as soon as I type fingerprint, I can see right here it's being used. And here's where it gets interesting. I click select new resource and then pick something different. So, so let's take like this circular brush, for example. It's completely different. Move this to the side click update and it just instantly swaps out that brush stroke with the other uh, brush stroke and the new alpha that I've selected. So um, we can do that again. I mean, if I search for circular again, I can find the new resource, click this. And again, I can look for any kind of alpha that I like. So let's let's pick an, an interesting one. For example, here, the smudge one, click update, and it redoes that stroke with exactly this brush. Now, a few caveats, uh, this works well for stamps and single resources. But uh, if you're going to, for example, replace the alpha that's being used on the uh, round brush. So let me see if we can actually find it. if you're going to replace this one, the shape that might have some uh, unforeseen consequences. So use this sparingly, but it's good in some cases in paint layers to swap out a specific asset, it can really save you some time with having to manually redo it. So that's another easy way to use the resource updater. All right, I've got a final example open here that will show you uh, some of the more advanced ways to use the resource updater. Now, uh, one of the first things that you can tell is if I look in the log here, I get a message that says something about um, the shader API has been updated, textures may briefly flash white, and also mentions that um, I could use the resource updater plugin to resolve the issue. So if I open up the resource updater, and you see there's two tabs, I've got resources that lists everything for my texture, and then shaders that are for the viewport shaders, I see that these are out of date as well. And as Substance Painter evolves, and you open older files, and this isn't even that old. I mean, I think uh, the old shaders are from a year ago or something. You can update the shaders in here as well. So if I click uh, update, it will swap the shaders out for the new version and you shouldn't be seeing any difference on your texture at all. Now as well, this one is uh, a more complicated texture. If I look at our data, there's, there's quite a few in here. Um, so if I would like to uh, fix these, I can just say update all and it will fix all of them. Now you have to keep in mind that when I do this, this might take a while. Um, this is like five texture sets, the textures are pretty big, it's going to have to recalculate quite a bit. But once I've done that, my file is completely up to date. So that's uh, an easy way to update old projects, you have to do resources and shaders uh, separately. We set this back to all. Now, I do have some problems in this mesh as well from old messing around. Um, there's two, I'll point them out. First is this camouflage that I have on here. It's just very low res and blocky and it's just not the highest quality. And it's probably because I've made a mistake in some custom content that I've created. If I go into procedurals and I find this camo pattern here, then it looks fine in the viewport, but when I dump it in, it seems to be the wrong resolution. Additionally, I've painted some alphas on here. These are some old alphas that I slapped together really quickly. And just the resolution is all over the place. This one's kind of okay. This one's really low res. And then if I look at these guys, they're also fairly low res. And keep in mind, this texture is like 4K, I think. So it should be really crisp. Now, these both come from a custom shelf. Just to point that out again, if I go into settings and I go to shelf, I have a custom shelf to find here. So just my name, Lawrence One, Substance Painter. This could be any studio custom shelf as well. And these files are in there. So I'll open up that uh, folder. And in this folder in the alphas, you'll see the uh, alphas that I'm using. And then in the procedurals, there's the procedural I'm using. I've got the SBS next to it, but only the SBSAR matters. Now what we're gonna do is update these and then I'll show you how this changes in the resource updater. So first I'll go into designer, I'll make my changes. So I've already done the changes in advance. Um, I've made a little up res thing to improve the quality on some of them. And if I connect that instead of the old output, and then for the logo that I have, I've just completely recreated that. So big, big changes in the file. I'll connect that as well. And keep in mind that I'm changing what the file does internally, but I'm not changing, I'm not adding parameters or changing how it works. I mean, it will use the same parameters when you update the resource, but the results will be calculated differently. So that is uh, now different. 
I'm going to save this and then I'll click again, publish SPS AR file. And then we'll check that camel pattern as well to see what was wrong with that. And uh, I, I know already what's going wrong here. This has been set to absolute. So if I double click on the graph, you can see it's been set to absolute. I'll set it to relative to parent to make sure that in Painter it's a dynamic resolution. Save that and again, publish the SPSAR file. All right. Now if we go back to Painter, this does not update straight away. So I'm going to restart Painter. And Painter has just restarted. So now if we open up the resource updater, let's bring that into view. Filter for outdated. It shows me that these two resources are, have now become outdated because it's comparing the version cached in the file with what's on the shelf. And it's important to know that it's going to only work if the names of these things stay the same. So you cannot change the file name or anything at all. It will compare the actual file content. So if the calculations inside have changed, it will detect this is outdated, but renaming will not have them show up as outdated. Now I can update these. If I click update here, it should recalculate and you can see straight away, this has become a lot crisper and the logos look just a lot better than they, uh, they did before. Especially this one here is a big uh, improvement compared to before. I'll do the same for our camouflage here. So let me bring that into view so that you can see it change. And again, click update, have it recalculate. There we go. And now it recalculates at a uh, much nicer resolution and solves that as well. So for custom shelves, keep in mind, you can do it this way. You will have to restart the program for changes to show up. This way you can uh, propagate big changes in your shelf across an entire file by just using update all to fix everything that was in there. That's it for showing you how to use the resource updater. As you can see, it's not very complicated once you understand the use cases. Um, just make sure that uh, you know in what sort of context you want to use the resource updater.